This video is about broken solar panels. If you can see, and we'll probably do a close up, there's a big bash area there. So the right place at the right time and these are going to get thrown away so I said can I have those and they went yep. Um, only because I'm just interested in what happens. Now then on this one there's a bit there where the, the glass has actually come out so we can see how thick the glass is. So I've got my vernier calipers here. Let's see if we can see what's going on. It's set at naught. Right, how deep is that? Three point four mil. So I'm I'm guessing the glass is probably three point five mil thick. But it's uh it's toughened glass because it's gone all crazed. You can actually see the little cracks floating through it. There is an area just there where it's not cracked at all. But we go across again and there it's cracked. And look there, you see those little cracks in there? It's everywhere. Anyway, I got these because I just wonder what happens when the glass breaks and what it was and how thick it was. So now we know how thick it is. This is a different panel. I've got two of them. But there's a curve on this. And here, it just it moves in and out. So the glass actually strengthened the whole lot. So this has got a slight curve on it now. Whether or not it's ab absorbed moisture behind there or whether or not because of all the little cracks it's opened up and the pressure of the the film on the back of the uh, wafers has just pushed it all forward. Anyway, the experiments. First of all I put them in the sun these in the sun and check the open circuit voltage. That was fine, 36 volts. I thought, okay. Then the next thing to do was to wire these in series because they're a nominal 24 volt panel for as far as battery charging is concerned. So I wired them in series and put a diode and an amp meter and all that lot. And we were only getting 2 amps out of them which is the last bit low. So the next thing I did was disconnect them and put an amp meter direct across the output of each panel and it showed 5 amps but the volts dropped right away. So they can provide the current but maybe not the voltage. So just want to uh, show you how these are wired and then we'll have a look at the back. The panel at the back is there. So we have a buzz bar along here. Then it goes down that set of wafers, across the bottom to the next set and up. So now there's ten wafers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wafers. So that's twenty wafers. Now each wafer should give about 0.6 of a volt. Okay, so that's 12 volts worth. Okay, open circuit. So then this comes along here and goes to the connecting box back there. Then this lot of wafers are connected to that lot of wafers and back to the connecting box. And this same buzz bar extends along to this set of wafers, down, back up, and back along. So you've got three sets in series. Hopefully that makes sense. So you've got 
12, 12 and 12, which of course makes up the 36 volts of the panel. So everything is in series. So this is the other side of the panel. Just bend that down. That cover was a right pen to take off. It had been glued on. Although it got little tabs to show where it should come off. There was a sealant there, there was a little rubber stuff there. Uh, you had to get quite uh, brutal with it to get it off. And of course, because this is panels damaged, and because you paid nothing for it, then you can experiment. So let's just zoom in and uh, see the connections. So this here is the negative and it attaches to this, which then takes the connection to the first string. The first string of 20 wafers comes out there. So between there is 20 wafers. Then between this one and that one there are 20 wafers and between this one and that one there are 20 wafers. So they're all in series. And then the diodes, the uh, bypass diodes, one, two, three. So there are three bypass diodes for three sets of coils. And the bypass diode is directly across the coil. Uh, I didn't mean coils, I meant series of wafers. So there are three diodes, one for each string of wafers. Okay, so that's that. So I couldn't work out why we weren't getting the current. I just assumed that because the voltage was collapsing when we do a, a an open circuit or should we say a dead short test with a, an amp meter straight across the output so I just assumed that we've got some damaged wafers in here so I measured between there and there between there and there and there and there and lo and behold we have 12 volts 12 this is under load so when it's charging, not open circuit. So we had something like 12 volts, something like 12 volts, and then the rest, of the, the last one was about 6 volts. So obviously, in that string there, there's some damage. The voltage, or should we say, yes, on open circuit, where you've got no current flowing, the voltage will get through the, the damaged wafers. But when you start putting a load on it, uh, the current won't, it won't generate the current. It's as if a small part of the, the wafer is still intact, and big pit either side is probably not intact, so therefore current can flow through it, but it can't generate the current. So as soon as you start putting a load on it, the, the voltage from that particular wafer collapses. Hence, we're only on low low voltage. Hopefully, that makes sense, and I've got an idea about how to use these. So, I did try this pair of panels across uh, 24 volts, and it gave 5 amps. So, maybe you got damaged panels like this. You can't really repair them, but if they're for nothing then put a coat of varnish on the front and use them for a lower voltage charging like a 30, uh, this is open circuit 30, 36 volts maximum power point 30 volts well use it on the 12 volt and it will, you'll be able to get something out of it as long as it's for free hopefully uh, we've all learned a few things here no doubt I shall do some more experiments and um, do an update at some point.